for people to be compassionate all the time about everyone suffering. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not how we live. That's not how we work. Uh, people live their lives in concentric circles of obligation and regard. <laughs>
So there are limits of compassion, natural limits to compassion. Uh, but are those good, I guess, is the question. Um, why shouldn't we try to overcome them mm -hmm. rather than to abide by them? Because um, when we do so, we ask compassion really to, to do more than it can, to be more than it can. And um, instead of uh, fortifying its natural mm -hmm. moral strength, we actually, I think, dilute it. Um, we ask people to um, uh, be in a, in a certain, in asking people to be in a way better than human, we, we leave them <laughs> less than human. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's a point in, um, in uh, the pity party where I discuss um, a, a public school on the Upper West Side of Manhattan where um, they, um, the, the uh, white uh, upper class parents are, take pride in the fact that they chose not to send their children to private schools, but instead to one that was uh, racially and ethnically right. diverse. Um, but then it turns out that um, to keep attracting these uh, parents, to get them to uh, send their children to that school rather than to a private one, um, the school found it necessary to uh, institute a gifted and talented program. Um, so there are, in a sense, two schools in the one building, mm -hmm. the regular track and the gifted track. And the racial and ethnic makeup of the two is very different. The parents who wanted their kids to have the experience of going to a diverse school find them in a much less diverse gifted and talented program. Um, and the uh, New York Times, which uh, covered this story, um, quoted um, one parent of one child who spoke anonymously for fear of reprisal, um, saying, um, yes, you know, we, we'd love it if, um, uh, if our, our children were in a program that was uh, in a school where every class is sort of exactly mirrored the city's demographic breakdown. Um, but there are children and we want what's best for them. We want a good education. We don't want to um, send them to a, a, a school or, a, or put them in a program that's less good for them than, mm -hmm. than might be just for the sake of this. And, and she he or she, if it wasn't clear, uh, <laughs> clearly tortured by this uh, dilemma. Um, and it, it struck me as um, a, a sort of overwrought expression that indicates the, the um, uh, in a sense, the perversity of liberal compassion, as, at, making people feel sorry for wanting to do well by their own children is not I think the path to social mm -hmm. justice, mm -hmm. to a sustainable polity. It, by contrast, um, unnatural and also not good. <laughs> uh, yes, it, it, it um, it's not good in theory. It's, it's the, the results aren't good. Right. Um, I can give you another example, sort of school related, uh, here in California, um, in the 1970s, the state supreme court became the first in the nation to rule that the state constitution's a guarantee of uh, equal protection under the laws and a good education, which was a nebulous phrase, not elaborated, um, made it unconstitutional, ruled out um, funding education primarily by relying on local property taxes. Mm -hmm. And the argument was that there are um, uh, some students living in school districts that have a very high tax base, either mm -hmm. because of the value of the residential property or commercial property sure. that can be taxed, and other students through no fault of their own who live in students with a much weaker tax base. And they, the court said, and so the unfairness here is that um, 
the poor districts have to tax themselves at a high rate and still can't spend very much per pupil, right. while the prosperous districts can assess them, themselves much less, more leniently and uh, provide a very generous and ample um, education. So the court decreed the, um, uh, the, the imperative was to um, universalize, equalize per pupil expenditure across the state. The state legislature responded initially by offering to um, direct state funds from other sources so that um, every student, uh, the per, per, per pupil expenditures in every district that was, had a weak tax base mm -hmm. would be lifted up to the state average. Right. Um, the state Supreme Court came back in a second ruling and said, no, that's not good enough. <laughs> Equality doesn't just mean leveling up. It has to yes. involve leveling down, too, preventing districts from taxing themselves to provide for benefits not available to every child. But this in was in the name of, of justice, this was in the not name compassion, I suppose, per se. Um, no, but I think it was certainly the, the, uh, the, the appeals made at that uh -huh. time were children are suffering as right. a result of these inequities, these um, defects. So they blend together, really, the arguments. Yes. But what, what immediately turned out was that um, in the old system, selfish and um, unequal system, um, people had a clear and easily comprehended basis on which to favor funding for their local public schools. Even people who didn't have children mm -hmm. in the schools mm -hmm. could understand that it was in their uh, enlightened self-interest to favor um, good schools and to be attentive to the efficacy with which the monies on the schools was being spent. But when you throw everybody's money into a big pot in Sacramento mm -hmm. and cover this whole huge state from the same source, people no longer felt that connection. Um, and not surprisingly, within a couple of years after these rulings, um, California passed by an overwhelming margin, Proposition 13, <laughs> that imposed severe restrictions on property taxes because people felt quite possibly that they no longer saw the benefit of it. And liberalism was left only to appeal to a sort of a, a, a sense of justice and guilt. Well, how can you be so selfish as to not uh, care for uh, kids in Oakland and South Central? Um, but prior to that, um, uh, there was, in fact, a, right. a very rational basis. So <laughs> I, I, I think... Charity begins at home. Uh, yes, that's right. And, and to say charity begins at home implies that it stops someplace <laughs> not all that far from just home. Down, just down the block. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I, I mean, I think that um, uh, the alternative to the politics of compassion is not the politics of cruelty or hard-heartedness, that the, the astute project is to appeal to people's self-interest in a way that um, um, allows them to connect their personal interest with the larger well-being of the community, rather than to simply say they should stop caring about themselves and start right. being Franciscans. Thank you. More on that in a moment. Yes.